Today's video is a real simple one. It's to find out if this iron is any better than this iron. Now the irons in question are of course both from Ping, they're the i525 and the i500, but you knew that already because that's in the title of the video. The things I want to find out is how do these two irons differ, but ultimately if you currently own i500s, is it worth paying a substantial amount of money to upgrade to the new i525s? We will find those answers in this video. But before I go any further, if you're new to the channel, or in fact, if you're an existing follower of this channel, one thing has changed in recent weeks. And just a reminder of that, I post videos now every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So make sure you subscribe and have that notifications bell rang, three videos a week. And one other mention, don't forget, we've separated some of our content onto a brand new channel, Myself and my daughter, Andy and Hannah, is a brand new channel following our kind of travels, what we eat, what we do, everything other than golf, I suppose. So don't forget to give that one a follow and subscribe as well. Anyway, back to the main video. So as with any head to head, we've got to talk about trying to separate and find out what the differences are. And obviously visually there's some changes which we'll talk about very, very shortly. But the big thing for me in the hollow bodied irons market in general, or the hollow bodied forged irons market in general, is there's always a bit of an issue with sound for me. Now, lot, not a lot of people put a great emphasis on the way their club sounds, so I get that. But for me, it's key factor to my decision in terms of purchasing. I like the soft sound of a forged iron. And some of you out there do as well. We're going to attempt what we've uh, sort of failed miserably in the past to do, and that's I'm going to detach this microphone from off my chest. We're going to put it on the floor, and we'll see if we can find any differences in terms of how they sound. And I'll see if you can spot that as well. We'll try. Now, the only way I can separate these two clubs, apart from a slight change from above, is there's a different shaft in them. And I wish they didn't, because we do some blind testing. But I do know this is the i525. I'm going to hit two balls. I pretty much got that straight away. It's a, well, it's a clicky sound, and I think it's a hollow sound. Better strike the second one. Similar noise. Really good solid ball, that one. And then we'll switch up into the 500, and we'll give a couple of shots the same, and see if our little microphone can pick it up. And I don't know whether you can still hear me talking right now. the best of strikes that one better now I think what we should do is go straight into my immediate response my immediate response is very little different whatsoever I struggle to separate them do you know what I go as far as to say and hit a number of balls throughout this video and I'll give an update on this one because I'm not even sure whether the i525s sound a little bit clickier than the i500s right now after those few shots. Okay, so we've done sound and feel, and like I said, I'll update you as the video goes along. But the next thing is how these things look in comparison to each other. And it's really interesting for me because if you go back to when the i500 was released, it was a real move forward for me in terms of Ping's design and shelf appeal. A real modern looking iron, really clean and stripped back. A massive thumbs up from me. The 525 is a little bit of a progression from there, not hugely different again, but a really good looking iron. The thing that surprised me, and I've got the five iron, I've got the opposite end of the bag down by my feet here, the nine iron, they both do exactly the same in terms of the sole width has gotten that little bit bigger in terms of the 525. That surprises me a little bit. And then when you lay them down at a dress, once again, very hard to split on the top line, it's probably a little bit thinner on the 525. So sole width for me, visually wider, top line slightly narrower, but virtually hard to split. And that's the same throughout the bag. The profile of the iron head itself has been changed slightly, but not one is better than the other, in my opinion. But interestingly enough, like I said, the sole width, a bit like me, put a little bit of weight on, a little bit more meat down that bottom end, I'm not sure why they've done that. You don't see any of that. So therefore it makes no difference, but hopefully maybe that wider sole width is helping with CG placements and making life a little bit easier in terms of being able to launch the ball. That's my only theory at this point. 
But ultimately, if you're going to shell out for uh, a swap up between i500 into i525s, then there's got to be a massive performance factor because there is a big price difference. For me, where the i525s were really interesting in my initial review was the long end of the bag. I've said this in the previous videos, but I'll repeat it again. It's very difficult for average golfers to generate enough club head speed to get the likes of a five iron, maybe even a six iron, to launch high enough to generate ball speeds with that sort of strong loft to get the carry distance that's um, just a five point in the bag. And the i525 did it really well. I've got five iron, and this is the first sort of, for me, test of how I would compare that and the, um, the i500. Let's see if we can get a couple of balls on camera that are half decent for a comparison. It just launches the ball so high. We were sort of getting, um, and we sort of reiterated this out on the course, we were getting a kind of um, 190, I suppose, average carry with five iron, but it's a kind of peak height that really surprised me um, that doesn't normally, not the kind of ball flight I am used to seeing. Now, different shafts, and they will, again, play a huge part in our ability to launch that ball, but let's just see for comparison-wise if we can now hit the 500. I mean, in all honesty, yet again, not huge differences. I think it's fair to say that the 525 carried that little bit further, certainly fired out there a little bit faster. Ball flight was very similar. We'll have a look in the numbers as to how they both rack up in terms of a comparison when I hit plenty more balls. But yet again, visually at least there, and that's all I'm doing right now, Trackman isn't even on, it's my immediate sort of responses as to what I am seeing. Not massive differences that are swaying me one way or the other. Now is that because the i500 is so, so good? Well, we've just not seen any major advancements in that 525 that we've noticed just yet. Right, it's that time of the video where I want your input. Who out there currently has i500s and is considering that substantial financial upgrade into i525s? That's been a massive uh, comment in terms of negative feedback is the price ping of charging for these irons. It is a considerable amount again, but yeah, who's considering doing that upgrade or just who in general is considering some i525s in the bag or is that price tag majorly off-putting? Right, so, okay, so in terms of data, I'm gonna keep this really, really brief because uh, there's a very simple, I'll put averages up, but the very simple uh, sort of rule of thumb throughout this is that the ball speeds out of the 525s are that little bit quicker than out of the i500s. It's as simple as that. They also do launch the ball just a tad higher as well, which was a consistent thing. But I will say, like I said in the uh, initial part of the video, they do have different shafts in these clubs. So maybe that's a thing. However, going back to the five iron, that's been mega impressive out there on the fairways. And in three tests I've done now, the one of the outstanding things is the way the five iron, the longer irons launch the ball. So I'd sort of a low different shafts, I'd sort of be happy with the fact that the numbers that there's a slightly uh, easier, let's say, not higher, but easier way of launching the ball uh, with the new i525s, which again goes back to that thickness of sole, which I think is a thing. I think that gives them a little bit more um, playability in terms of that CG, a little bit more mass. But again, that's my theory and my theory only. In terms of the sound and feel, I'm also gonna uh, go back on what I said. I've hit a number of balls I don't think either sound great. They're never gonna be my personal cup of tea. But like I said, I get loads of comments where people say, why does anyone care what a club sounds like? So listen, I get that, that's up to you. Uh, but for me, hollow bodied irons do have that sort of clicky sound and they, they both have it. I would say maybe on, on center strikes, they probably sound similar. Where I've got them a little bit off the bottom grooves a few times, they definitely sound a little bit more, don't feel as good, which they shouldn't do, I suppose, but the i500s, it's more noticeable there. Maybe you get away with a bit more, maybe that sweet spot is bigger, but either way, that then resonates in a better sound uh, consistently in the number of irons that I've hit in this last um, hour or so. And also to point out, we're in indoor facility, acoustics are a bit different than outside, but never, uh, as yet, as anyone come up with a hollow bodied forged iron that really does it for me in terms of the sound. Anyway, overall assessment would be this. Not a huge um, jump forward for me. There never is, obviously, um, from one iteration to another, because first of all, the i500s are a really good set of irons. There are noticeable differences, there are minor gains, but 
this price thing is massive, whether or not you would swap up from i500s to i525s. I would doubt that you would, I don't know. I would doubt that you would. But what they haven't done yet is the, and I'm gonna test these uh, later on in a week, is the i210s are still the best feeling iron, in my opinion, that Ping have produced. And they need to get that sound and feel into these irons before they can truly tick the box for me. Anyway, that's it. I've tried to keep it as straightforward and as simple as possible. I still managed to waffle on at the end and drag this thing out. I'm trying to keep it concise. It's a very simple head to head. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out just a little bit if you are in that dilemma. Give me your comments down below. Any feedback is always welcome. Hit that like button and I will see you all very, very soon.